Hi, I'm Tony Mercado with the Communications Unit of the Santa Clara Valley Water District, and we're here at Rinconada, the district's longest operating water treatment plant. Since 1967, this facility has provided clean, safe drinking water to the west side of Santa Clara County. But today, we're going to go behind the scenes to an active construction site where the plant is now going to be undergoing renovations and upgrades to make it even more reliable than it has been. So stick with us. We'll see how the project and all the people behind it are making this happen. I'm here with Steve Twitchell, plant supervisor for the Rincon Auto Water Treatment Plant. And Steve, no one's got to be more excited about the work that's going on here than you and your staff. Can you tell me a little bit of how everybody's feeling about the work right now? Well, it, right now we're, we're very excited about the, uh, the, the, what we have going on and the two current construction projects as well as the upcoming, actually ongoing reliability project. Um, the reliability project is going to be bringing uh, the best available technology in the industry uh, here to Rinconada. And uh, it's going to provide us with a much more reliable um, treatment plant to meet the current and upcoming uh, uh, regulations that are coming from the state. And so what are we looking at here then? Well, here we have a representation, um, a basically a model of the plant in, in its current state. Um, out there right now we have a lot of construction going on so this is the best way to, sh to show you exactly what the plant and how it operates now. The plant is rated at 80 million gallons um, and we do meet that uh, during uh, summer months. We have met that, that, uh, that flow. Um, so if you look at the, at the model right now, this is the operation center. It's currently being retrofitted for a seismic retrofit project. That's why we're here in the trailers. Um, but how it works, our raw water comes in from our, from our source, sources and it goes into these four clarifiers. They're a, co a contact clarifier. Um, each one of them are rated at 20 million gallons a piece. They hold a little over 2 million gallons uh, of water. Um, and then from that, that's where all of our process really happens, our flocculation, um, our sedimentation, and the water from the clarifiers then go into these six large filters very large filters for, for this style of plant. Um, so it doesn't give us a lot of flexibility, especially at high flows. Um, and then from the filters, it goes into our two clear wells on either side, and then it's pumped up to our Rinconada Reservoir in, in reservoir mode. And then from the reservoir, it goes down to our retailers on the West Pipeline. So there certainly is a lot more involved than people can probably imagine to get the water out of their faucet. Yeah, oh yeah, it's, it's, it's very uh, complex. I mean, this plant was built in 1967, has been basically running 24-7, 365 since then. Um, it is the only water treatment plant on the west side. So we supply all the water for west side retail, retailers. So it's very important that this plant keeps running. So what are we seeing here? Well, right here is uh, basically the, uh, uh, what we're going to have when uh, the process or the treatment plan has been improved uh, by hopefully the year 2020. And what's exciting about the, the new plant is, again, it's going to be much more reliable. We're also going to have raw water ozonation. Uh, the Santa Teresa and Penitentia plants do have ozonation in its intermediate ozone, which is fed right after the sedimentation basin before the filters. Here at Rinconada, uh, the design engineers has, has put raw water ozonation, which is the, basically the first process. And that process is going to happen here at this structure. This is the ozone contactor, um, and then the structure here is the ozone generation room. Ozone has to be manufactured on site, has a very short lifespan. Um, so we have to generate it uh, on site and then utilize it immediately after it's generated. From there, we go into a what we basically call conventional um, treatment process, which is flocculation basin, sedimentation basin using plate cellars. Plate cellars help the particulates that we're making fall out and settle faster in a shorter um, footprint. From there, it goes into, our, into 12 
smaller filters, which will be able to uh, filter up to 100 million gallons a day of water. And then from there, it goes into a new chlorine contact chamber. This is where we add our disinfectant, gives it enough contact time. It's a serpentine style, which gives it some contact time with the water and the chlorine. From, from there, it goes into our two existing clear wells, which is part of the original facility built in 1967. And then from there, pu is pumped into the Rinconada Reservoir and or uh, San Jose Waters Moore Avenue Reservoirs. Well, this seems like just an intricate way to get water to the people. It, it is, but this, this is a very reliable way of doing it. Um, it's it's uh, very robust and it's 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 going to be a very it's very exciting. So it's it's something that the district really needs is a reliable plant on the west side. Okay, well let's go take a look. Great. So now we're on top of the old operations building at the plant, and Steve, can you tell us what we're looking at around here? So basically what we're looking at is, it, is the existing plant, the plant that we have now. Um, uh, this plant, again, has been running basically 24-7, 365 since 1967, and has provided you know water to the west side for that entire period. Um, so what we're looking at here are our four clarifiers, right? And what's unique is each one of these clarifiers is basically an individual little process in the plant. They all have their own little uh, systems or little how they operate. Um, and so one of the things that operators have to know is the characteristics how each one operates. They all operate just a little bit differently. So the uh, raw water comes in. Our pro primary treatment process happens in each four, uh, each one of these four clarifiers. Uh, and then from the clarifiers, uh, the, the solids settle to the bottom and is then drawn from the plant, goes to our solids handling facility. The clean water uh, is captured into these little, look like bicycle spokes on a square wheel, and is transported over to our six large filters. Uh, as you can see, one of them's in during a backwash right now. Um, that's a part of the process that is uh, necessary for, for basically cleaning a filter after it's encapsulated or captured all the particulates that we're trying to strain and filter out of the water. Uh, then the water from here then goes to our two clear wells on either side of the operations building and then is either is pumped up to the Rinconada Reservoir or up to uh, the Moore Avenue, uh, San Jose Moore Avenue plant or uh, tanks. So Steve, what happens to the water once it leaves here? I mean, where does it go? Well, that's a good question. Uh, after we, we make the water, comes through the plant and it goes up to the reservoir, we actually have a west pipeline that goes uh, from here at the plant starts at 72 inches and goes all the way down to our uh, retailers, um, our west side retailers, which the last retailer is down at Mountain View, uh, which is right by Ames Research Center. Um, and you can actually from this vantage point, if it was a little clearer day, you could actually see Ames Research Center, uh, the big hangars out there. And that kind of gives you the, the scope of the length of the west pipeline. So there's a lot of other new good things that are happening around here. There is, yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about that stuff? Well, one of the, one of the process, we're doing, we have several pro, uh, projects going on. Right now we have the seismic retrofit of the, the main operations building, but which is very important. Um, obviously it's, it's a health and safety issue about being able to get people out in case there's a seismic event. But one of the process improvements that we're doing is to our solids handling facility. It's called the residuals management project. And what it is, it's, it's a very important part of the process. I mean, our, I mean, our main goal is obviously to make safe, reliable, quality drinking water for our retailers. Um, and our customer base. But the other one is, is to be able to process the amount of material that we take out of the water, which is substantial. Um, and the two processes uh, actually work cohesively to, with each other. Without one, I can't do the other. Um, I'm pulling all this material out of the water. I have to be able to process that. And, and the residuals management project is basically taking uh, our old belt press system, which is old, it's been around for a very long time. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a viable technology but there's more efficient technology out there. And the technology that we decided to utilize here within the district is a centrifuge uh, system, which is basically instead of pressing uh, the water uh, out of the sludge between two belts with pressure, we're basically, as, as the name dictates, we're using a centrifuge, which is we're spinning the water out of the sludge. And the product that we're gonna get is gonna have much less water content in, in it than what we're doing now with the belt press. So it's much more efficient, 
Uh, it's easy. It's very easy to run, and uh, we're going to have a better product at the end. And that product that we have, the solids that we have, uh, is then taken to the landfill where they use it as top cover uh, for night. So they, they like that, uh, that material, but they also would like it much drier. So everything comes together pretty nicely. It does. It's really it's cohesive. It's very cohesive uh, as far as all these projects going along. And at the end point, we're going to have a, a basically an entire facility that is much more efficient, easier to run, and is and produces a, a, a better product. That's good to know. Yeah. So Steve, there's a lot going on around here, and yet you still plan on keeping the plant operational. We do, yep. How in the world are you going to do that? Well, it was, it was well, well thought out. It took uh, many years to come up with the five different phases to keep the plant operational while building the new facility around it, and it and, it, and it's pretty solid on how, how we're going to do it, and it's, it could be very feasible. Um, so right now we're in phase two. Uh, phase one was the contractor coming on site and getting their trailers uh, situate, sh situated. And now phase two has started. It's been a couple weeks into it, and they've already started to ground, uh, move the material out. And in this open field over here is basically the, where phase two is, is taking place. And they're, they're going to construct our new ozone contactor, flocculation basin, and sedimentation basin using plate cellars uh, in that phase. So once they construct that, and we do the commissioning test and process testing on that, they're going to bring that water into my six large filters because that process is going to take uh, place of, of my four clarifiers. Once that comes in to my uh, six filters, then they're going to start taking out my clarifiers. And that's phase three. Um, that opens up the space for our new chlorine contact chamber, our new ozone generation uh, building, as well as our 12 new filters uh, that are going to be replacing the six filters that we have existing. Once that is up and running, then that's when they can take out my six filters. So there's a lot of different, there's a lot of different uh, things that have to happen through this the five year process to get to the end point of the, of the new plant. Um, and so our operations staff's on board, they're actually looking forward to it. Um, and uh, they're looking forward to basically having a, a, a new plant. So we know the most important part of any organization are the people. Nothing really gets done without a good quality team. Can you talk about the people that you work with and also about yourself and how you got into this particular field? Sure, I'll, I'll start out with, uh, with, with about myself. Um, I was kind of predestined to, to be in this field. My father, a retired engineer with the State Water Resources Control Board of California. And so my entire life, I was brought up uh, knowing the importance of water um, within the state of California um, and, and all the different uh, applications, uh, therefore. Um, so it was it basically was I decided to join uh, the military. Uh, so I joined the United States Air Force and, you know, during the recruitment process, they asked, what, what are you interested in doing? And I said, hey, I'm interested in water, anything within with water. And they said, well, we have a, a, what we call environmental engineering uh, program through the civil engineering uh, department and I signed up for it. And so I signed up in 1989. I've been treating water and wastewater uh, ever since then. Uh, and so that kind of, I worked at many different agencies, uh, seeing how a lot of agencies do uh, do their work uh, and what I like and what I didn't like, which I bring into my day-to-day -day, uh, day -day career here at the district. Uh, as far as uh, here, here at the district, I got to say, in my entire career, I haven't worked with a better team than what we have here at the district. Um, everybody from our engineering staff, our procurement, maintenance, uh, all, all the way up, obviously up to our, my operation staff. Not just my operation staff, the entire operation staff at the three water treatment plants out at the uh, advanced recycle plant. I mean, they're highly certified, highly motivated, and they've taken ownership of of not only what they do at their individual plants, but in, in the entire district. You know, it's a real, it's a real comforting, comforting feeling knowing 
that we have a, the, the group of people that we have to support our mission.